Hello everybody, this is John Rigby with Rigby's Pool Services. Um, I wanted to start this video by um, with a little disclaimer that this video is going to upset some people. It's going to cause a little bit of uh, um, it's going to cause some people to get a little bit upset, um, start some discussions, but that's okay. Um, in this industry, you're going to find that there's a lot of people, a lot of different builders, service professionals, a lot of guys that have been in the in the business for 30 years um, that all have their own opinions and all have their own ways of doing things. Whether they're right or wrong, that's not for me to judge, but I'm here to tell you what the science and the facts say. Okay, so today we're going to talk about salt versus traditional chlorine pools all right for the sake of the video we're going to call them salt pools and chlorine pools okay it's just easier but um let me say both pools are chlorine pools technically salt still uses chlorine all right but i'll say you know salt pools and traditional chlorine pools so um let me get started with salt uh, salt pools utilize a salt cell and they have a controller and the salt cells something similar about this length um, it's a tube it's got little metal um, a little metal cell inside the water passes through the salt water passes through the metal makes contact with the water the electric is then sent through the metal and uh, electrolysis takes place and it takes the salt ions so salt is sodium chloride together they make a salt ion so it sends the electrical charge through as the water's passing and it separates the sodium and the chloride and essentially it takes that chloride and sends it back to your pool and is now hypochlorous acid okay um, that's what your sanitizer is that's what cleans your pool um, salt is great because it it's constantly making chlorine and then once the chlorine's burnt up, it turns back into salt, and it's just a, it's a cycle, okay? Because of that, and because it's constantly producing it over a 12-hour period while your pump is running, um, you're able to run your pool with a much lower parts per million of chlorine, so you can set it at, at one or two, and it's always going to stay there, okay? So it's, you're not getting really high levels. It, it feels a little bit better on your skin because it's at constant level. Now, one of the myths is that you do not need to use all the other chemicals. Well, frankly, that's just not true. Okay, in a salt pool, you still have alkalinity, pH, calcium hardness, everything else remains the same. The only thing you're changing is how you get your chlorine. So you still need to balance your pool the same way with the same chemicals. Okay, so that part of it is not any different. You still need to balance your pool, the pH, and the alkalinity, the calcium hardness, the cyanuric acid, all of that. Okay, don't let anybody tell you that a salt pool does not need cyanuric acid. In fact, it absolutely still does. And if you look at the owner's manual of all the salt cells, whether it's Hayward, Pentair, Jandy, they all have right on there their recommendation for where your cyanuric acid level needs to be. Pentair is, I believe, 30 to 50. Hayward's a little bit higher, maybe 60 to 80, but they all recommend that you still use CYA or cyanuric acid to help support the cell and the uh, production of chlorine. If you don't have it in there, you're going to produce chlorine and you might produce, say, two parts per million per day and one part per million of that's going to be burned off. So you're making your cell continuously work over time to compensate for the loss uh, from the UV rays. So yes, they still expect you to put CYA in your pool. Um, that's a myth. You still need it. Now, people also say that salt pools don't burn my eyes. It's, it, it's gentler on my skin. Well, typically, chlorine is not what's burning your eyes. In a pool, it's usually the pH that's causing your eyes to burn, and the reason for that is the same with skin. Um, the pH of the human eye and also of the human skin is right around 7.4 in that area 7.4 okay um, if your pool has a pH of 3 or a pH of 9 and you go underwater and open your eyes that's a big difference from the 7.4 of your eyes so you're gonna get that burning okay so that would happen in a salt pool or a chlorine pool so it doesn't matter that's that's a myth that you're not gonna have your eyes burn in a salt pool 
That can still happen. Um, the smell. Salt pools have less smell. Well, they have less chlorine in them, but really when you smell a, a chlorine-y pool, um, what you're smelling is chloramines or an unbalanced pool. Okay, you're not smelling the, a pool that has way too much free chlorine in it. You're smelling a pool that has too many chloramines or is ridiculously unbalanced and needs to be shocked and brought back to balance level. Okay, and again, that can happen in salt pools or traditional chlorine pools. Um, salt pools, of course, use the same um, hypochlorous acid that the other um, traditional chlorine pools use. That's what the chlorine turns into. That's what is your sanitizer. Um, and when people talk about salt being corrosive and destroying stuff, um, salt by nature, of course, it could be a little destructive, but it's not any more destructive than high levels of chlorine. Okay, that's a myth. What is destructive is when your LSI, your, satura your saturation index, gets way out of whack. And your LSI is really important to keep in tabs. And in a balanced pool, you want your LSI to be right about zero. All right, and LSI takes into account alkalinity, calcium hardness, pH, water temperature, it takes all those parameters and it puts it together and sh shoots out a number. There's tons of apps that'll do it for you, so you don't need to worry about the math. The apps will do it for you, but you want to shoot for zero. Okay, Orenda says from negative 0.3 to positive 0.3, you want to be within that range, shooting for zero. Um, over time, a salt pool versus a chlorine pool, the costs equal out. There is not one that is more inexpensive than the other. And here's why. Because a salt pool has a heavy cost up front. The equipment's expensive. The cells are expensive. You have to hire a professional to come in and do it. Most of these are not DIY programs or DIY products. You usually have to bring someone in and it, and it costs money, okay? Um, so there's a higher cost up front versus a traditional chlorine pool. There's not a ton of cost with that. And a lot of uh, chemical uh, chlorine feeders are DIY. You can cut the pipe and put them right in line yourself. They're not that difficult. Um, the benefits of the salt pool, you can run it at a much lower parts per million for your chlorine. Um, it's a little bit more effortless because it continuously makes it on its own. You don't have to go out and add the chlorine. Uh, some people say it is softer on your skin. Okay, I, that's, I'll buy that. Uh, it does not fade your bathing suits as quickly. It doesn't really color your hair and that's because of the lower constant level of chlorine. You're not getting you know fluctuations and such. The cons, as I mentioned, it is more expensive up front to install and you usually have to have a professional. And the same thing goes with repairs. If something breaks, you're usually not gonna fix it yourself. You need to call somebody. Um, it does use more electricity because you've gotta power the, the automation control box that tells your, your salt cell when to turn on, when your pump's running, and such. Um, and salt pools traditionally have a higher pH because of the hypochlorous acid and because of the salt in, in general the hypochlorous acid that's coming out has a really high pH. Um, I think it's around, I don't know, close to 11 or something. I, I might be making that up, might be nine. I, I honestly can't tell you off the top of my head, but it's high. And because of that, salt pools, your pH creeps up, creeps up, creeps up. You've got to use acid or dry powdered acid to bring it down, and then it'll continue to creep back up. So again, there's that you're constantly still balancing your chemicals. All that's not any different. You still need to test your pool. Um, your cell will need to be replaced. We say every three to five years. I know some that have made it five, six, seven years, and I know some that have barely made it out of one season. Um, it's really important to take care of your cell on the inside because it's such a perfect environment of really high pH. Um, the cell can really get uh, scaled up and you really need to pop that thing off and or have a professional do it. Check the inside, make sure it's not covered in calcium and scale and uh, make sure it's clean. Usually just spraying it off with water will do the job. If the water doesn't work, vinegar is a good option. I usually say as a last resort, use acid. But don't jump right to cleaning it with acid all the time. That's not necessarily a good thing. <clears throat> now let's hop over to chlorine pools. Your chlorine, your traditional pools use different types of chlorine. If it's trichlor or dichlor, tri or di, 
that means that they have cyanuric acid in them. They're usually in the, in the pucks, the trichlors are of the pucks, the dichlor is usually in granulars. Both of those are stabilized, so they have the cyanuric acid. The other ones are liquid sodium hypochlorite and cal hypo or calcium hypochlorite. All of those, once they're entered, put into your pool, they all interact with the water. They still make the hypochlorous acid, which is the same thing that disinfects your water like salt. Um, the cost of these are a little bit higher right now, but um, you know, you're buying one bucket that'll get you through per season. Um, now, as far as some people go out and throw the tabs in every day, they might last a day or two. You know, that could be a pain in the butt if you don't mind doing it, great. Some people like to put a feeder in that holds 10 pucks and that might last you the entire week. Um, now with that, you're gonna see a little bit of, depending on how you add your chlorine, you might put a ton of chlorine in there and it might jump up to 15 and then a couple days later it starts to creep back down to the level you get it, you know, you want. So it might, it might drop back down to the level where you want it, around two parts per million. But the fact remains that if you're diligent and you're testing your pool, um, you might have a couple weeks where that happens, where it jumps up and then gets back down. But you're eventually going to figure out how much you're putting in there and at, at what rate. And you're going to figure out the best thing for your pool to where it's not up and down, up and down, where you're going to put one tab in or two tabs in. You're going to figure out how you can keep it at that constant level. Um, one thing I should say is that both salt pools and chlorine pools both need to be shocked. All right. They both still need to be shocked. There's nothing changes as far as the chlorine goes. You still have free chlorine, you still have total chlorine, and you still have combined chlorines. And you're shocking to remove those combined chlorines. That is not different, okay? Despite what people tell you, you still shock with, with salt, and you still shock with your regular traditional pools. Um, chlorine also can be as corrosive and dangerous and um, destructive, I should say, destructive as salt can be at high levels. Chlorine can be just as bad. It can tear your equipment up and stuff as well. So, you know, to each their own in that one, they're, they're about the same. Um, as far as costs go, there is a, it is less expensive. Like I mentioned before, there isn't that high cost up front. It kind of is, um, you know, a constant cost throughout. So I say they they about balance out when you factor in that you're replacing your cells and you're up you're putting all this money up front. They're about the same cost. I truly believe that. And I think if you talk to people that have installed both and serviced both, they'll tell you that there there is no cheaper or more expensive one. Um, they do use less electricity because you're not running the automation. Now, one thing you can do with a chlorine pool, if you don't like doing the tabs or the the granulars every day. There is a liquid pump that you can put on, a stenter pump, and you can tie it into an automation machine that, that runs and checks your ORP or your free chlorine level. And as that water passes through, it sends a signal and says, hey, we need more chlorine. That pump turns on and it pumps liquid into your pool, liquid chlorine into your pool constantly. If it were, if that were me, that would be my route. Liquid chlorine's relatively cheap. It's very cheap and um, it'll last you a long time. It's not stabilized, again, you still need cyanuric acid, but um, you need it for everything else too, so it's not that big of a difference. Um, high levels of chlorine can cause itchy skin, they can um, bleach your hair, that kind of stuff, but again, if you're diligent and you figure out your pool and you really lock it in, there's, there's no reason you can't run a traditional chlorine pool just like a salt pool and run it at the same level. Again, they're not a whole lot different there once you figure it out. But one thing is, I'll give the nod to salt on this one, when, when it comes to chlorine, you've got to store that chlorine and you need to store it safely. You never, ever, ever mix different types of chlorine, okay? If you, if you pour cow hypo, into trichlor and you mix them into a bucket, you're gonna have a serious problem. Boom! Okay, you've got a problem. Do not mix types of chlorines and do not ever mix chlorine and acid. Okay, that produces a poisonous gas and it can kill you. So again, when I, I stress this, and I cannot stress it enough, never mix these together. Make sure you know what you're mixing 
make sure you know what you're storing make sure you know what you're dealing with read the labels and if you don't know ask or look it up online don't mix chlorines don't mix chlorine with acid um, I think that about sums it up the only other thing I wanted to mention is that again every person every builder you're gonna talk to is gonna have a really strong opinion on this and keep in mind that one they're either trying to sell you chemicals or they might be a rep for a certain company or you know they make more money off of one system versus another do your research okay and don't just listen when one person says oh no salts better because of this cool all right you we hear it all the time do your research what I presented today are straight facts some of them might have been opinions but I, I presented you the facts to me I don't think there's a big difference between the two I think it comes down to your preference that's about it if it were in a perfect pool I would run really low chlorine whether it's from salt or liquid feed or whatever and I would run it with either a UV or an ozone or a mineral system to back it up um, but yeah to each their own I can't stress enough the importance of LSI when you talk about the corrosion and stuff LSI is causing that corrosion you need to keep tabs on it get yourself a really good test kit learn the basics of chemistry and take care of some of this stuff yourself okay you don't need to run to the pool store constantly and get it tested if you learn the basics it's not super super difficult and you really can do it um, I'll be putting some videos up that'll kind of help you as the pool season gets closer. I've got some test kits to show you that uh, Lamott has sent me. I've got a ton of stuff to give away, so stay tuned. Let me know if you have any questions or um, any topics you want me to cover. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.